I went to a doctor and she was just like, she was like, I don't know what else to do. Like, you're just going to lose your hair. Ah, so, really? That was the last, like, the, that was the last thing a doctor said. That is. Yeah. Geez. You have an Instagram that you're I building do. and you're yeah. really into cider. I am. And you make good, you brew your own stuff actually, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, so let me start with this question. What's the difference between beer and cider? So beer is typically brewed from grains like wheat. Um, if you're brewing like a non-gluten uh, containing beer, you will either add a clarifying agent to reduce the beer to um, have no, uh, well, it'll still have gluten, but it'll be a broken down form of gluten that's not as reactive. But whenever you have a gluten-free beer, it's brewed from non-gluten containing grains totally. And it'll be like millet or buckwheat or some other uh, non-gluten containing grain. No. But cider is brewed from apples and it typically doesn't have any grains at all. Uh, there's some beers that will add fruit to them and you'll have like maybe a, an apple L or something like that, but that's also not cider. It's still, gotcha. still beer. And the, which one of these was the one that you brewed? So I brewed this one in this the swing one. top bottle right here. Mm -hmm. Can I try that one? Absolutely. You want to try them now? Yes. We saved it for the camera. Yeah. Try so it on camera. So this should be a sweet modern that I brewed. How it's, did you get into cider brewing and even just drinking it? So I'm gluten free. So from being gluten-free, it's kind of more difficult um, whenever you are a beer drinker to find a good alternative for drinking. Yes, that's very true. And some, even some cocktails have, I have issues with, like Bloody Marys. I have to be careful like what Bloody Mary mix they're using yeah. because if they add Worcestershire sauce to it, then it might have gluten in it. Yes, and I do want to like get into why you're gluten-free for sure, but yeah. let's cheers. Yeah, cheers. And then I'll tell you how this tastes. I'm not a big like alcohol drinker, so yeah. I'll tell you I'll tell you if it's good or not. You have to tell me all about it. The Is there aroma. something fancy that I should do, like wine, or should um, I just drink, taste it? Well, if you had a clear, had it in a clear glass. Sorry, you could, no clear glasses. You could um, cover your hand with it and swirl it some, and kind of like look at the viscosity and see how it like rolls against the glass and, and things like that. Um, you can smell it. And see if you smell a lot of aroma. It smells so of good. It. Like yeah. it really does. It doesn't. It, it really retains a good apple flavor. Yeah. Um, my style that a brewing that I do. So what I do is I do ice cider. So I I brew from frozen apples, and that's just because my setup that I have at home. I I crush my own apples and press my own apples to make my own apple juice. Nice. So the setup that I have at home, it's a lot easier for me to do from a frozen apple wow. rather than from a fresh one. And it's one. better quality, you think, when you do that? I, I don't know. There are some benefits to doing um, this kind of brewing versus it. like a fresher apple brewing. But uh, I really like my method and I think that it, it makes a really good product. That's so good. Yeah. Like This is what I was saying. This is dangerous mm, yeah. because it's good. Yeah. Like I typically don't drink much alcohol because it, I don't like the way it tastes. And I, I try to not, I, I try to do more of a um, almost semi-sweet to sweet whenever I do a sweet <sighs> cider because um, too, too much sweetness, it just kind of kills the experience for me. I think sometimes a lot of sugar overpowers the tannins in the apple yeah. and things like that. This is like a perfectly balanced in Thank my you. opinion. It's really Thank good. You very much. Yeah. I could drink this, like actually drink it. Yeah. What is the alcohol amount? Um, so this is probably five to six percent. I don't remember. Really? I, know I didn't write it on my bottle. God, it just doesn't even taste like there's that much alcohol in it. Yeah. Damn. It's not it's not a bad percentage, yeah. It's delicious. Yeah. Seriously. And I have to I, buy I, some of these off you. I only add sugar at the end. I don't add sugar um prior to fermentation. Cause if so I do add it would, sugar. It would jack up the, the alcohol percentage more if I add it. So the, the primary fermentation, it just ferments all of the sugar out of the apple itself. And then whenever I go to package it, I'll add more sugar to get the sweetness still. So. Awesome. So are you selling this stuff? Not yet. No, not yet. You plan not, on doing it. I plan on doing it one day, but you not should. right now. This is really um, good stuff. Yeah. So I, I kind of want to continue working on my Instagram and, and launching a blog that kind of centers on the science behind brewing and things yeah, like that. For sure. So what, that's a good segue. I'll just give a little context. She has an Instagram, Miss Cider, and I will put links and everything in there. Thanks. And it's really cool. She talks about cider. She goes into the details. You talk about lifestyle stuff too, which 
Mm-hmm. I will ask you, why are you gluten free? Yeah. You were telling me a little bit about it before. So I'm gluten free because I have an autoimmune disease. It's not celiac disease. It's called alopecia areata. And so what happens is you'll get um, typical for alopecia areata is hair loss that includes like round patches on your scalp. For me, my hair loss has those components as well as I'll have hair loss going from the nape of my neck up and that's where it'll begin. So um, I have to maintain both a gluten and dairy-free diet to be able to not have any hair loss. Whenever I was an undergraduate student, that's whenever it began and all of my hair fell out as well as one of my eyebrows, the hair on my arm started to fall out and I had to wear wigs throughout the rest of undergraduate. What did you think when that started happening? Do you have any idea what it was that was going on? I had no idea. Whenever I first noticed it, I was like just brushing my hair and I had hair about the length that I do now and I was just brushing my hair and I guess I, I noticed more like clump, not necessarily clumps, but I noticed more hair in the drain whenever I would take a, a shower and wash my hair. But I never like felt any bald spots until one day whenever I was brushing my hair, I saw like right underneath my ear back here, there was like a huge patch of hair missing. Mm-hmm. And I freaked out and I didn't know what was going on. And I went to see the doctor and they did all kinds of tests on me, took a lot of blood, all kinds of things. Um, but what they did was then they diagnosed me at the dermatologist and they took a little sample of skin and sent it off to be biopsied and they Uh determined that it is alopecia areata. And then was it the doctors that told you about the gluten-free, dairy-free, or was that your own research that you were doing? No. So whenever I was first diagnosed, I went through all the treatment options that you can. Um, there are multiple treatment options at the time that I was being treated there was um, a treatment that would give you like a rash on your scalp and that would kind of crowd out the immune cells and the hair follicles that are attacking. And then your hair would come back. But then if you start having another issue, um, a lot of times people say that this autoimmune disease is triggered by stress, um, things like that. So so maybe I have a more stressful event and then my hair starts to fall out again. Hmm. So it's kind of like a cycle of continuously like trying to get treatment that will harm you in order to for you to get your hair to mm. grow back. And it isn't like a, it doesn't actually cure it. It sounded yeah. like it was kind of like putting a Band-Aid on it. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's other treatment options that I did. Like there's an immunosuppressant called cyclosporin. And it was a treatment with cyclosporin and prednisone. And prednisone has some harsh side effects as well as cyclosporin. Um, cyclosporin specifically would, would make your blood pressure go up. Mm. So I had to monitor my blood pressure the whole time I was on it. Oh. You're also not supposed to be on cyclosporin for very long. Um, so I had to eventually get off of it because my blood pressure did start to go up. And it worked whenever I was on it. Um, my hair did come back and it started growing back. But as soon as I had to get off of it, then my Same hair thing. started to fall out wow. again. Yeah. Man. So um, at the time, I I heard from like a friend of a friend that told that person that I should try doing a gluten free diet. But I'm a scientist, like I'm a, I'm a trained scientist. I have my I have my at the time I didn't have my master's in biochemistry. I just had a bachelor's in chemistry. But I was like, okay, well my doctors are really smart. Like I feel like if this was a treatment option, then they would have told me about it. So I go to Google Scholar and I try to Google like what would any kind of correlation be between maybe celiac disease and alopecia areata. Well, it turns out that there actually is a a, a, a correlation between the two autoimmune diseases. There's a researcher at Columbia University. Her name is Angelina Cristiano. She's a geneticist and she found that there's this similar DNA mutation that's shared with alopecia areata celiac disease and rheumatoid arthritis, they all have this similar DNA mutation. So I was like, that's convincing enough for me to try to be gluten-free. This is a treatment option for people who have celiac disease. Maybe the disease um, progression is similar to that for people for alopecia areata. Well, so it wasn't even a doctor that told you? No, it was It was kind of just this influence of people that were in like the nutrition field that uh-huh. were kind of like sharing some information like, oh, maybe this will help your friend out. That kind of trickled back down to me as well as like kind of reaching out on the internet and seeing what the scientists have recently found in that field as well as um, even what they say on on forums for people that have this autoimmune disease. Oh, I've tried this, this, and this or just any autoimmune disease in general. I wanted to see what trends were across the board that doctors aren't necessarily talking about. Yeah. 
But I'm not saying that this is a great treatment option for everyone who has alopecia areata. There are people that I've talked to, as well as just speaking with you today, that, that they've tried everything that they can in their diet to be able to change things up and it's not working. Nothing's yeah. working. What do you think? Do you have any idea why that might be the case? Um, Pretty so, mysterious right now. Yeah. So some autoimmune diseases are expressed in different individuals differently. So maybe there's just some simple variation from one form of alopecia to another form mm. of alopecia. My particular autoimmune disease is alopecia areata. So maybe they have another form called alopecia totalis or mm. alopecia universalis. There are different forms of alopecia that you can have. So I don't know if there's some sort of correlation between those different types of autoimmune diseases and, or those different forms of alopecia areata or alopecia in general that wouldn't have it, um, an effect with a diet change. And maybe alopecia areata specifically has an effect. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And what about other treatments in the actual just typical Western medication? Because Everything you're talking about seems like there's like side effects and yeah. nothing that's like a good permanent solution. Yeah. Is there any other treatments that um, you, that you tried or that you heard of? So at the end, like I saw three or four different dermatologists. Everyone had a different um, treatment option for me. Um, one would try one method, another way to try another method. One method is um, cyclosporin injections in your mm. scalp. But then again, you're getting shots in your scalp so yeah. you can have the potential of hair growth coming back. But I mean, as you can imagine, like these are shots in your scalp. Yeah. It's not like that's a large area that they can cover yeah. doing that kind of thing as a treatment option. It might be fine for like if you get a small patch or something yeah. like that, but not necessarily for a large area of coverage. And at the end of me seeking out treatment, I just kind of quit um, before I went the gluten-free, dairy-free route because I went to a doctor and she was just like, she was like, I don't know what else to do. Like, you're just going to lose your hair. Ah, so. really? That was the last, like, the, that was the last thing a doctor said. That is, yeah. Geez. Why isn't it in that field more that the diet can be a huge benefiting factor? I don't know. Why so, isn't it talked about so more? So specifically with doctors? for the dermatologists that I saw, um, I don't know if there are dermatologists that specialize in this particular like autoimmune disease or anything like that. But for the doctors that I saw. There's one doctor that I really, really liked, and he's the one that put me on cyclosporin. Mm. And he told me, he like showed me in one of his medical books the amount of information that he had in his medical book. And it was like one paragraph. And he let me read it. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, this is the information that I have. Yeah. So it's like they kind of like, you know, they aren't necessarily taught the intricate details of every single like how T cells are reacting to certain things in your body and, yeah. and stuff like like it's it's not necessarily something that's very very well presented yeah so maybe I they see. have to do a lot of leg leg work on their own like i did like i had to look look up the genetics genetics um research and see what was there yeah. and what is the correlation between one autoimmune disease to another yeah and the reason why he was able to treat me the way he was was because um i think i don't even know like if he was supposed to use cyclosporin but mm. But like, I don't know if it was FDA approved for my autoimmune disease. So it's like, you, you kind of just have to make these connections and correlations and use some problem solving that you may not necessarily think. I mean, I'm sure doctors do a lot of problem solving. Of course. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know. I don't it's know. It's weird. What... It's a weird thing. I mean, there there's a lot of stuff I've noticed that like, have you heard of Michaela, Michaela Peterson? No. So she is a huge advocate right now of carnivore diet. Because she had an autoimmune disease too mm -hmm. that was just completely detrimental. Like she was, she had to get like ankle surgery when she was like, I think it was eight or nine, like super young. That was just completely ruining her life. Wow. And she did research and she learned about it and she figured out that she did an elimination diet like you were saying you did. Mm -hmm. And for her, she can only eat meat. And when yeah. she does, it completely cured all of her symptoms that were like ruining her life. Right. And it, it isn't in the mainstream, yeah. you know, community right now with doctors. And I, I wonder why that is. Do you think, think it's because diet is so complex? Like there's so many factors yeah. with what you're eating, so many variables that it's so hard to know, like the, all the little things that could be affecting you. We were even talking about gut, like the stuff that goes on in our gut, you mm -hmm. know. 
Yeah, I think it's changing. I think that doctors try to talk about it more now, especially if you do go see a gastroenterologist. Um, a lot of times, whenever I try to reach out to gastroenterologists to get like any kind of diagnosis um, for any intestinal issues that I'm having, because I was kind of having a little bit of intestinal issues um, around the same, or after I changed my diet, um, I was noticing some issues. When you went to gluten-free, dairy-free? Yeah. Mm. Um, so I, I was a little concerned that maybe I had some intestinal issues and because this is, is this was affecting my health. Like yeah. my, my hair began growing back after I changed my diet to gluten and dairy-free. Um, and, and so like whenever I talk to my doctor, like this is a common thing that he's heard about people changing their diet. Yeah. And so it's like, it's not something that, that he's discouraging or anything like that. He's like, it's great that that works for you. Um, and, and it works for you. So they're not ignoring it at least. I mean, yeah. that's a good thing that they're um, not pushing it on the rug. Yeah. And then I worked at a university near here that, um, they do a lot of healthcare things and the research that I was doing was, um, uh, cancer research and really? and the doc and the person that I worked with was a MD PhD, and and he has in gastrointestinal He has I can edit this he, part out. Yeah, he has um, uh, intestinal issues. Gotcha. And so uh, he he also talks a lot. Of, like we would discuss all the time about needing to be gluten and dairy free because yeah. he also needs to be gluten as well as dairy free. Yeah, it's great. I mean, you, have I talked to you about my daughter at all? Yeah, what? well, you've mentioned that you have a daughter, but not that she yeah. has any issues. Well, she she has a genetic disorder that is causing her to be global developmentally delayed that is very unknown and we've seen so many different doctors about it and there isn't even there isn't even a name that they can put on it, but she also is epileptic. Oh, and wow. she went on the keto and it completely cured her seizures. Yeah. Nothing else was working. So is that one of the things that the doctors recommended? No, they actually you guys didn't. Reached no. Out her mom kind of like read. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Her mom did like intense research on it and just, you know, keto diet, CBD oil mm-hmm. pretty much cured her seizures. But see, even changing your diet very drastically like I do with not getting dairy in my diet, yeah. I'm afraid that I'm going to have issues with osteoporosis in the future because mm. um, I'm not getting calcium. And and so it's like... It's like complex. These, there's so many variables. Yeah, there's so many things. Like even just changing your diet, it does play a role in your health and, yeah. and the way that you are still consuming nutrients and things like that. Yeah. I mean, um, there's so many theories. Like like uh, Michaela Peterson's whole theory with the carnivore diet. They They talk a lot about how gluten is like a poison and how some people are just allergic to it. Some people, it's just completely horrible for us and there's no need for it why are we even eating gluten what's the point yeah you know um, we're not built to consume those types of well you know. there are people that they do fine they don't have any issues at all consuming gluten um, we don't know i mean think about how obese america is in general i mean there's a lot of health problems mental health problems depression anxiety and we have like the worst diet in the world in this country. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that have just in general, it would like benefit them to go see a nutritionist, <laughs> right? you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, but, but yeah, for, for people that have an issue with gluten though, it definitely is like a, a mutation in their DNA or something that's going wrong with their intestinals. Is, you know, they're having some intestinal issue that yeah. they should I think address. everyone would benefit from going gluten-free. You know, yeah. I'm gluten-free for the most part. Yeah. And it's like amazing how much better I feel, how much more clear I feel and everything. Well, just even things that maybe you wouldn't think of before, like um, having eczema flare-ups and things like that. I don't know if there is a correlation between gluten and having that, but I know that my health was in a lot more disarray than it is now of whenever course, yeah. it's was, amazing like how it, it like cured it i mean yeah. your hair looks great i would never know or been able to tell ever yeah. so specifically for my autoimmune disease they do see a lot more skin sensitivities in people that have alopecia areata yeah. so i don't know if there's some sort of correlation between my eczema flare-ups and and you know the issues that i had with that and having um this autoimmune disease and being gluten-free but i do have a friend um, that, that also brews and she's out on the East coast. Her name is Michelle. She's the brew babe on Instagram. Um, but she has an issue. She actually has been diagnosed with celiac disease, but one of her issues is that she gets, she breaks out in rashes whenever she has gluten. Mm. So it's like it, you know, it affects her in a different way, even beyond the intestinal issues that she has. She has the skin 
issue. Um, yeah, so sure. I, I think like, yeah, you would call that maybe an allergy. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's one of those fields that's just like a mystery right now. And there's so many things and from stuff that I've read and even just my firsthand experience with myself and my daughter, I'm like, just why even risk it? Just, you know, don't <laughs> eat gluten. Just Well, especially healthy. if it benefits your family yeah. too, um, because it is kind of, it's kind of crazy because whenever I first started being gluten-free, a lot of my friends would try to be like super, super um, supportive and try to eat that way too. Really? Um, whenever me and my boyfriend first started dating, our first date was going to get pizza together at like a brewery. Um, and we went there and they had one or two gluten-free beers on their menu that I could have. Oh, that's good. And then we ordered a pizza, but this was like the worst pizza either of us had ever had. And it was gluten-free? It was a gluten-free pizza. Yeah. We got yeah. half of it without cheese on it because I couldn't do the cheese. Gotcha. So, so the other half had cheese on it and it had like, I don't know, asparagus or something. Yeah. Doesn't sound I was, great. I was just trying to be like health, kind of healthy. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, I'll, I'll be the one that eats this awful pizza. He won't be. But he wanted to split it with me. And I'm like, yeah. you don't understand. This is going to be a really bad pizza. Yeah. And and then we got it and it wasn't that enjoyable. But the date was. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, that's how you make really good connections, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah, I have other friends and they're always like, oh, Corey, I'll get just the gluten-free bread and we can just eat the gluten-free bread. And I'm like, but you don't understand, like, it's really expensive and it's really crumbly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good. I mean, it, you know, for you, it is like, it's almost like not a choice. Yeah, like you it's have not to at be, all. And it's good to just be outright about it and say, listen, this is like my lifestyle. I can't choose. <laughs> Don't try I to don't like, have be a nice, choice. you know. Yeah, I don't if have a I choice. If I could, I would eat all the mac and cheese and drink all the beer. <laughs> well, this stuff is so good. You want to t- tell more about how you got into doing this and why you started doing? It? I know because of the gluten free yeah. thing, but why? Why cider? You know, why so, alcohol? It used to be such a thing in Atlanta. Like whenever I was an undergraduate student, like we would always go to the breweries and hang out at the breweries. Like you know, it'd be a big group of friends, and it would just be like a fun, great thing to do. Like on a on an afternoon after work or, you know, on the weekend just to hang out. And um, especially on like Sundays, we would have Sunday fun day, of course, and go to brunch and then directly go to the breweries after brunch and and just spend the day hanging out together and enjoying like a nice, a nice day in Atlanta together. Um, And so I quit being able to participate a lot in that because we would go to the breweries and maybe I would just hang out for one um, because they wouldn't have anything that I could drink mm, there. So this or, was happening then. Yeah. So when? So if you don't mind, just when did it start happening? Like how long has it been now that you've been gluten free, dairy free? Let me think. I think I was twenty two or twenty three, maybe whenever mm. I first started, and now I'm twenty nine. So gotcha. about six years, maybe. Man, yeah. That's yeah. A while that you've been doing it, most people can't commit that I, long to I, it. Well, if I did, didn't do it, yeah. then I would have the other alternative of not having hair, which I very much so identify with being this person with long hair. Yeah, for um, sure, for I've sure. always had like this kind of hairstyle throughout like high school and up. Yeah. Um, so like, it's just part of who I am and yeah. it just always has been. And whenever my hair started falling out, it's like you lose a piece of yourself. Yeah, I was wondering about just what did you feel when, when the doctor was like, you're just going to lose your hair. Like, what did you I think like, in that no. moment? <laughs> yeah, and like, what was your, like, how did you get through that? And what drove you to start to look into it more, you know? Um, yeah, so the whole reason why I went to get my master's degree in biochemistry was because of this experience. Wow. And being so limited with the drug options that were available, I'm just, I w- would think to myself, like, there has to be a better way. Like, there yeah. has to be another treatment option that's out there that someone just hasn't even thought of because they're not, as driven as I am to yeah. find a reason or a way to to fix it. Yeah. Wow. So I didn't know that. That's pretty amazing. So that's why I went the direction I did with my career because I was really driven towards drug development because of experiencing an issue with an autoimmune disease like wow. that. And what what exactly is your master's like? What what is the field specifically that you're? So I worked. In? I worked um, at Georgia State University with Dr. Jenny Yang. I did protein based drug development on a MRI project. So we were making a protein-based MRI contrast agent for I- imaging uh, cancer, either breast cancer or liver cancer, or things like that. So my specific contribution to the project was changing the biodistribution of this um, protein-based contrast agent to go 
um, instead of it being excreted out the kidneys, it would be excreted from the liver rather mm -hmm. than the kidneys. So you can really look at the kidneys and look at the liver and see uh, brightness contrast in it to determine if there's a, a cancer growing there or something like that. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Involved with helping with cancer. It was a lot of fun and I learned a lot, of, a lot. I just learned a whole lot. And, and I loved working uh, with that research group and, and I think they're doing great work and I hope that it continues. That's awesome. Yeah. That's just awesome and inspiring, especially considering how much different you are with it. You know, it's yeah. like, I would never have been able to know. I would um, never have told. I would have kept pursuing um, drug development as a career field if I wouldn't have found being gluten and dairy free does really benefit my health and, yeah. it, and it helps my hair grow back. Yeah. So, and here I am today. And you <laughs> said that you're thinking about like starting a blog to talk about. It. I think you should for sure. Talk I've about attempted it. to start a blog in the past to just only talk about alopecia areata and how tremendous of an experience it is to just have any health issue and still be able to function like yeah, as a human yeah. being and, and get up every day and go to work if you have celiac disease and you aren't, um, you know, getting a benefit from treatment options or change in diet or whatever. Like it's, it's just, or if you have Crohn's disease and, you know, every day you're having these pains and, and you have to just live through it. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just very um, trialing on a person whenever you have to deal with these things and, and you just have to make it through the day. Yeah. Um, and there aren't necessarily great treatment options or there aren't necessarily a lot of answers, but there are people working on it that are in the sciences and are driven to, to help people. Yeah. So would you advocate to, for people who have it to try going gluten-free, dairy-free, even though it isn't in the... I definitely you know, say that if you think that it would give... I don't see any harm in it. Right? Just, yeah, just like, like I said, like, you know, for me, there might be harm just because I could, you know, have issues with my bones in the future because I'm not consuming a proper amount of calcium potentially. Hmm. I don't know if I am or not. I need to see a nutritionist. And you can supplement. <laughs> I mean, you can take supplements yeah, for that too. Yeah. That's so a I pretty can, simple fix. I can supplement it. And there are some foods that you can still get calcium from that's not dairy. Yeah. Um, but definitely if you think that something would give you a benefit of changing things up and it's not going to be harmful, um, yeah, always talk to your doctor too though. Yeah. <laughs> Keep Make sure you stay in close, so tell close me, information with your doctor. I already chugged this whole thing. <laughs> Tell me how you got, you make this stuff. Like, what is it? And and also, I really think you should sell it. Yeah. I'll be the first person to buy some off of you if you do. So sure. um, I I have apples that I it's have that are frozen. And then I will take the apples and I'll grind them into a pulp. And then I'll press the, ap the apple pulp and I'll press it down into juice and then I'll add a yeast to it or other ingredients as well. Um, there's some other other things that you can add uh, that will kill any bacteria that's in the juice before you add yeast and it won't interfere with fermentation. Um, so there, there's like um, some tablets that I can put in that will help with that, that I typically treat the juice. And then I can either add some vanilla or another um, what all blend of this? fruit. This this one has it's just apples I think really I, no I, vanilla or anything I might have added vanilla bean I'll have to go back and look at my recipe for this one um, so make a recipe book too I do I have <laughs> oh a, you do That's I have cool. a collection of recipes That's but awesome. I'm I'm not as good at labeling sometimes because we just blow through it whenever I do make yeah. it. I live with two guys, and they they, they love <laughs> they love sure. that I have cider on tap. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so we go through it fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, what are these two? Can I try something else now? Yeah. So this is a cherry, and then this this one's a hopped that I, I got this at one. the cider judging competition that I went to. So these ones, I don't know if you can get these on the West Coast um, because I got these whenever I was at that judging competition. Gotcha. But yeah, I, ha I haven't even tasted these two. I don't even know what they taste like, but <sighs> I thought I would good. come and share it with you. I haven't finished mine yet. For Thank the, you. Yeah. Thanks for bringing this stuff. Like I've said, I'm not a huge alcohol drinker, but we met in a Bible. I didn't even know if I mentioned that. We went met in a Bible study. Yeah. And you, we, it was beer and God. It was super fun. And yeah. I was like, this stuff is good. Like I'll actually drink this stuff. Mm-hmm. I miss Beer and God. I'm so sad that it's over. It was such a fun community of people yeah. to be around. And and it's over just because Dennis, who's Dennis has a church. He was the guy running it. He's yeah. supposed to come on this podcast, so I'm calling you out. 
I'm so excited that'd that you'll awesome. have Dennis on. Yeah, that'd yeah. be so cool. He's an amazing person, and and he's such a great pastor oh, of the Church of City Light um, in downtown Atlanta. I mean, L. A. Sorry. Oh, you're good. <laughs> um, so so yeah, he's the pastor of my church, and and I met him through Beer and God, and I met a great group of people through Beer and God, and it's basically like we just chat about the Bible. Um, there's people that come that aren't necessarily Christian, yeah. um, or they might be from backgrounds that are are not like our particular denomination, like yeah. maybe from Catholic or from from another denomination, or people that are just I don't know curious and want to hang out. Well, why why I know Dennis said that he or what you were saying is he wants to just get more involved with the church and stuff, mm-hmm. but why not keep beer and God going and just have different people host it every week or something? Yeah, so um, I I would love to see it. that happen. I don't, you know, I would love to do that, but I don't have as much of a background in the theology that Dennis no, does, so I true. just feel like I wouldn't be able to give it the. But justice. you have the cider. I do have, have the this cider. Part down. I do have the cider, um, but he just has such a great knowledge and yeah. background. He has a PhD now, um, so he has just this strong foundation in theology that I do not have. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of great people in LA that have that great theology background, but um, we haven't found them yet to be able to host Beer and God. Yeah. Maybe we will in the future. Or you could just do it. You don't have to have a foundation. Just host it and bring <laughs> a Bible and just the, talk about bring it. Bring the people in. Let yeah, them bring come. The <laughs> For sure. Just bring people in and talk about it. Just, But it was awesome. Like the approach that he had, which my interest with religion in general is more from like a psychological metaphorical standpoint. And I feel like he was so in that vibe with he it. Is. You know, like he totally was. It was yeah. really cool. I miss it. And he's really good at keying in on people too and and just kind of chatting with them and, and seeing what their issues are in life and what troubles that they have and and kind of presenting that at the next meeting as like, oh, we're gonna center our next talk around this this major issue in the world. And yeah. it might affect your life as well that kind of thing um, where he'll just like really center the content around what might be troubling the group of people in front of him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was awesome. That, and it, it's really interesting too, because um, with religion, with Christianity, you know, where I'm from in Texas, right? Like it's pretty conservative, pretty like my experience growing up a lot of the time was that a lot of religious people were very close-minded and not open in that community. Like the few times that I went, I was very surprised. Mm -hmm. Even you, like how open you are. Yeah. Most people, like at least where I'm from and kind of the stereotype of like Christians is like, like, you know, I cuss a lot and stuff on this podcast (laughs) and like you just seem totally cool and comfortable and it's cool. Like I think it's needed. Well, I think it's needed. I mean, it, there is sometimes an internal struggle with me because I was always kind of taught in that conservative kind of um, outlook in life too. And they do see things like um, this kind of kills your testimony as a Christian, hmm. um, that you don't behave in a certain way and do certain things. But the thing that I love about um, the congregation that I'm a part of is that we are not perfect people. And this is a phrase that they say a lot in the in whenever we are gathering together. We are not perfect people and you're not expected to be a perfect person, but you're expected to try to um, follow your your um, religion or follow your heart or yeah. your 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 dr- what drives you in life and try to get it as close as you can to kind of that those beliefs and, and those foundations in society that yeah. we kind of like um, kind of are on the same path to walk together. Yeah, for sure. And that makes it easier to walk that path whenever we can kind of be Saying on, that we're on not the same perfect, page. Right? Because that's the thing too, is that super, super conservative Christians judge other people mm-hmm. harshly. Yeah, I think know? we're all walking a very dangerous path together. Yeah. And li- that's this path called life. And it's not an easy path. And yeah. some people might trip a little bit over some some tree branches and things that get in the way. But um, hopefully, if you're a part of a good a good group of people, um, then they can help you lift you up along the way. And yeah, that's why sure. I associate with the people that I do in yeah. LA. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome for sure. I just I always think it's about just have good intentions. It's simple. Just don't be an asshole. Yeah. Just have good intentions. You know. 
I always wanted to also, like, if I'm living in such an area where there is a, a large amount of people that are distraught, like there's Skid Row right there yes. next to us. Like Even this area here. I want to be a part of an organization that has an impact on the community around them. I've For always sure. wanted that. Like, what's the point of having an organization if you aren't impacting your community around yeah. you? And, and that's like a lot of what I try to look for whenever yeah. I look for a religious organization in particular, like, like that's the utmost importance to me is that, yes, we are trying to do something to help out the community around us. Yeah. And wh- what it, you brought, that's just something that I think about all the time, Skid Row, the homeless issue in LA. What, what do you think, what do you think the issue is and what do you think their solutions could be? Uh, a lot of the issues um, maybe are a combination of mental illness, um, you know, finances, just everyday things that can knock you on the ground and continue. It's not, you know, maybe health issues, yeah. health issues, mental health issues, um, financial issues, anything or drug issues, whatever it is, you know, just um, these really difficult things that people have faced and maybe have not addressed health wise or have not um had the best people around them to help them out. Yeah. Um, and then they they get, I don't, I don't know if, if it's like... It's like you get to a certain place where it just feels hopeless, like you can't get out of it, you know? Yeah. And then when you get in that place, it's like, it's very, like, it's sad too, the amount of people, normal passerbys that just walk past the homeless person. Yeah. Um, you know? It, yeah, it's difficult to, to see that every day. Yeah. And Every now and then I I try to help people out as much as I can. Like I'll I'll give them food. Like especially I've seen people on the street before. They're on the corner and just I've seen like a kid on the corner, like just sitting on the street, not asking for anything. And I walked up and I'm I'm just like showing him what I have in my grocery bag because I just walked to to get groceries at the market and I'm walking back. And I'm just like, if you see anything in here that you want, please take it because um, mm-hmm. I don't want you to go hungry tonight. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know, like every now and then I can do little things here and there to try to what do what I can. You yeah. do what you can, but there's a bigger issue that needs to be addressed. You yeah. Know? Like it's, a, it's a community issue. It it's is. A, it's, like it's, a, it's a big time issue with what can we do as a community? What yeah. can Los Angeles do? What can the government do yeah. and to there, actually address the issue? You there know? are missions that are on Skid Row. Union Rescue Mission oh. is one of them that has outreach in that community. They they never, their, their motto is that they don't turn around any w- woman or child off the street. Mm. They always bring them in. Um, so I try to do my church and I are, are what's the name of the church, by the way, if anyone city, interested. city light church, city it's light at church. the art share in LA. And Is there, and there's a website and everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'll put that in the show. Yeah. Notes. Um, so, so a lot of the work that we do is with, um, union rescue mission. We have Tuesday night live where we have our, um, we'll, we'll go in and we'll, we'll do, um, praise worship with them. Gotcha. Um, I've, prayed with women um, at the Union Rescue Mission before. A lot of their prayers are always about other people, though. Yeah. It's never about them. It's always like it's always an older lady that may, may be living off the street, and she always pl- prays for her kids, always. Yeah, well, and, that's an amazing mentality to have when you're yeah. in that situation. And you're in a situation where you're living, you know, in, in a, a rescue mission, and— and all your concern is about your child, yeah. and it's like. But I pray for them. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna pray for. I pray for their child, but I also pray that they are reunited with their family in a very wonderful way um, that keeps them united. And and I pray that they. I always pray that they'll they'll find their way back home. They'll find a peaceful home. They they can rest rest easy every night. Um, there, there have been people that have attended our church that are off of Skid Row. And, and that's one of the things like they'll get put in temporary housing, but it's very rough side of town, you yeah, know, for sure. That um, area. Yeah. And, and it'll be people that have health issues and they're living in a rough side of town. Yeah. And it's like, they're trying to get their health issues addressed while also their living situation is very precarious. Yeah. So, for sure. yeah, and I'm not religious. I mean, I'm not, I definitely don't consider myself Christian religious, but that attitude, praying, the positive attitude is like, it's, it really needs, it seems like, I mean, I think that the issue, like this, the homeless issue in any big urban city, it's such, it, it's a problem. But to me, it's like, you should have never fucking even got like this. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a deep rooted issue and I it should have never even happened. I think there are people you know? that kind of like have the historical knowledge of how that this evolved and how, yeah. how LA began to be the center, this Mecca of homelessness. Yeah. Um, I'm not one of those people to necessarily Me. talk about that. Um, I have heard bits and pieces from people that are though, and yeah. they say things, a lot of it centers around mental health and yeah. how, and how, um, they would kind of like bus people into LA and really? drop them off kind of thing. Yeah. yeah or, or they would like more. bus in like people that are homeless in another city and kind and of just drop, drop them. There. Yeah, yeah. Here. But even, even then it's like. There should be, and I know that this is talked about Joe Rogan. We kind of talked about him a little bit. He's a huge, like, he definitely influenced me wanting to start this podcast. But right. they talk about it all the time. And it's it's like a community issue. It's like it's like, it it's like a sore on the community that needs to be addressed. That if everyone put their heads together, I'm sure there'd be a way. It's not like we're going to solve mental health issues. Yeah. But there's a way to solve the issue of not having a like a safeguard for people mm-hmm. that like some some way to save it you know it's just one of those things that's yeah. like yeah i mean especially just people in this area. living on the street and being able to safely sleep somewhere yeah somewhere yeah there's this woman named safe. elizabeth there's yeah. this woman named elizabeth that she sleeps in this little cubby right around the corner all the time and i talk to her and just kind of you know i've kind of gotten to know her a little bit but she talks about how she is harassed yeah. All the time. And that's really sad. All the time on the street. Like, and she can't ever get into homeless shelters. And she's harassed and she's fearing for her life all the time. Like, mm-hmm. it's crazy. It's really insane to me. Yeah, that's sad. Um, yeah. That's I why don't we got to drink this alcohol. Yeah. So, so there are people that, that there are um, nonprofit organizations based out of LA that try to do a lot of work. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, their, their resources are limited. Yeah, and that's just the way it is. That's and, another one of the issues, right? Why and, don't we have more resources going? And I know it's complex and I'm sure there's a ton of reasons why, but it seems like it should be a priority. Yeah, it should be. Well, it is It is more of a priority in my life, but even less so than, than I try to make it. Like, I try to make it more and more of a priority, but also these people are right there in front of me. Yeah. It's easier for me to make it a priority versus someone that doesn't live in the proximity that yeah. I live. And then as a community, it's like, that must, it's very hard to make it a priority for the community as a whole. And there's so many different things, but right. it's just crazy. Like people that, that might be listening to this or listening to Joe Rogan that aren't in this area, that aren't in LA. I know where I'm from in Texas, like it wasn't an issue. Yeah. And then you come here and it's like, you really start to see it and you're like, wow, this is like, if you really go down to Skid Row mm-hmm. and you look, it's like. There's masses. It's, it's easy to ignore it. It is. Yeah. It's very easy. I'll admit it. It's very easy to ignore it. It's very easy to walk by someone that's on the street and just kind of, we can compartmentalize very easily. But Mm -hmm. if you really look at it, it's like, this is wild that this is happening. It's just one of those things like, how do you, how do you fix this? You know, what could, what could we do? Right. Not you and me, like what could all of us do in some way, society, you know, I guess that I'm, I'm very liberal on this. If I, if I had to say politically. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just, it's right there in front of us. And I think it's harder for people that don't necessarily live in a city for that's sure. as afflicted to for have sure. a lot of compassion there. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it, you, I hear a lot of comments like just like, dragging yourself up by the bootstraps yes. kind of attitude. Yes, people say that all the time. Um, and, and, you know, Partly like... there's truth to it. If you're capable of doing that, I'm sure you've done it. Like, yeah. I've done it before. Like, I've had to pull myself out of situations or attitudes that aren't beneficial to myself. But these people are very limited in their resources. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe they don't have family or, you know, nothing there to help them to support them and yeah. all that is there is the mission and the yeah. mission also is limited in resources for sure yeah for sure i we didn't even i don't know how we got into talking about this but it's something you know it's definitely something yeah. especially for us because we live right here you know yeah it's, it's definitely at the forefront of my mind a lot of yeah. time well it's awesome the church that you're involved with does stuff to help with it yeah. I mean, it's, you know, do do what you can, yeah. you know. And I brew cider, and the only reason why I go to the church that I do is because of beer and God. Yeah, and that's so awesome. So it's like cider kind of brought me to my church home. Oh, really? So, so you got you did the cider, and then you found beer and God. That's awesome. Well, I didn't. I actually didn't start brewing until um, until I started going to beer and God. But I I I was like into the cider drinking and and yeah. stuff like that, and I actually brought. It's so funny. So whenever I first Oh, I have another one I need to try. When I first went to Beer and God, I it was like in a it was in a building that was different than the building that we we met in. 
Um, and in that building, there was a doorman, and I told him I was here for a church thing. And it was like a meetup group that I had found online, and I didn't know, like, I couldn't remember what the name of it was. Um, so I just told him it was a church group. And he was like, okay, they're, they're in the basement. You just have to go to the basement. So I'm walking to the base. Oh, that's a hot that one. That is so strong. My is it very God, hoppy? It's yeah. nothing like those. Um, yeah, like, it's very I different. I want to gag smelling that. <laughs> it's hopped. So if you don't like hops, you might not like try that. Try a little bit of it. I don't think I'm going to enjoy this. I haven't much. tried that one yet. <laughs> Um, you want to try it now? You still have stuff. I still have stuff. I'm a slow, slow drinker whenever I'm talking. I, I, God, I just like chug through those so quickly. <laughs> I typically. Um, let's see. So, so how do you like that one? Let's see. Let's see. Are you a fan of hopped of IP, IPAs? That's actually. I mean, that's that's good. Yeah. Because it's sweet. Mm -hmm. What is this? What's the flavor? Because it's actually sweet. Um, I'm not. I have had this one yet this one i think it's supposed to be a dry actually oh my god yeah it's supposed to be more more on the drier side they have a dry scale on the back here that's actually very good though um so so it's supposed to be more on the drier side wow it smells super super like they're like very hoppy mm -hmm. whatever the hell the word is yeah it's made in new york that's good wow i think yours is the best to be honest i swear yeah. to god oh thank you not even just saying <laughs> like i swear i would that one i would drink uh well I, it's better. not very fair because i didn't bring you another sweet taste <laughs> that's comparable i brought you all all different styles all of good. cider i mean it's crazy cider i didn't even really understand the difference really yeah. between cider and beer but it's like cider is the fancy version of beer. Well, I've also better. done mead before, and mead's just made from honey, oh, so really? it's it's different. Ah, yeah, that must be like whew, that must be very sweet, very <laughs> strong. Yeah. Um, not necessarily sweet though, okay. because some of them can it it can be again like wine, where you'll have more dry ones versus gotcha. the sweet. Um, but but yeah, they have interesting characteristics for sure that yeah. are different, different from totally different from cider, totally different from beer. Kind of starting to actually feel it now. Yeah, um, I just I just poured some of the cherry one, this black cherry. It is very black cherry, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think I got like, I think I drank enough of yours in the beginning that yeah. it's all kind of tasting the same now at this oh, point, yeah. you know, like it just evened it all out. Um, yeah, you can kind of drink it in a way, like um, you can slosh it around in your mouth and, yeah. and like taste how it feels underneath your tongue and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely... Not beer. It's definitely yeah. just a completely different experience it than is. drinking beer. Yeah. I'm like, I grew up drinking like Bud Light, mm -hmm. like the cheapest beer there was. And just, God, it was so disgusting. <laughs> like just chugging it down. <laughs> this is good though. I'm going to have some more of yours. Mm -hmm. You going to charge me for this? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, yeah. I, so I had, I started whenever I, the beginning of this year began, I had about 15 gallons sitting at home. And um, whenever I started um, the job that I have right now, I just kind of let it sit <laughs> and yeah, I didn't do anything with it. What is your job, by the way? Just to give a little excerpt, we could talk about that a little bit. Um, I'm a professor at Claremont McKenna College. Cool. Um, soon I will be shifting from Claremont McKenna College to Scripps College, which is a women's college. Oh, nice. Yeah, my HR That's cool. will be changing and I'll be going through them for my HR rather than Claremont McKenna College. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Teaching a bunch of 20 year olds. How do you like that? Um, well, they're kind of even younger than that because oh, they're really? straight out of high school. Oh, that's right. So they'll that's be like doing. around 18, I guess, 20 nice. or 18 to 19, maybe. Cool. Um, yeah, you were saying how you were you taught at high school and you're like, I actually want to teach people that give a shit about this stuff. Yeah. Um, so I taught. It was interesting. I taught high school and I enjoyed doing that. OK, but I was young still and I, I still look very young. So that is a bit of a challenge yeah. for me to get around. I'm sure your students are like. Wait, yeah. are you a student? They you don't have very me. much respect for me, to be really? honest, because yeah. of how youthful I look. Um, I think whenever they start talking to me and I give them tips on the, the labs that they're doing and yeah. things like that, then they start to gain more respect for me because I am very knowledgeable yeah. about what they're doing. I'm yeah. their professor. Um, so it takes them a minute to warm up to respecting me, I think. Yeah. Um, but whenever they first walk into the lab, I don't think that they have a lot Bring of respect. Bring some of your cider. I guarantee you they'll all respect you right off the bat. <laughs> no no food or drink in lab. <laughs> and no. I definitely would not be serving um, alcohol to a bunch of 18 Sneak and 19 in. year olds. Sneak it in. You want some <laughs> respect right off the bat. Oh, right. Um, so you were telling me about the cider. I'm still like, 
I'm still curious about why the hell you're not selling this. Uh, yeah, Turn it so into your, it's, you know. It's, it takes a little bit to, to start up in the alcohol industry. How much can you make at a time right now? Like what um, are your batch sizes? Right now I can brew maybe 10 gallons at a time. That's a, quite a bit. Yeah, it's not bad. So it would be five gallons that are two separate um, batches. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, five, five, five and then another five. I, I mean, I'm not knowledgeable about cider, obviously. Like I'm, I'm not a huge, you know, I don't my palate isn't even that great for this, but mm-hmm. this is really good. To me, it seems like people would love to buy it. For yeah, sure. um, I would love to get there one day, but it's yeah. just going to take time. Yeah, for now, you can just keep giving it to me. I'll keep chugging it down. Well, that's the thing. Day. I have a lot of friends that are very willing to to help me with it. So you do, why do you do it? If you're not trying to sell it right now, do you just get, you're, you just get it's meaningful to you to do it? Well, so I'm a scientist, so I want to improve processes and, and things like that. So just learning the the way to brew and how to brew and just approaching the challenges that you get mm-hmm. to in brewing. Um, I, I kind of I kind of think to myself, like, Corey, you're you are not capable of running a business as well as doing the job that you do now. Um, but you can't do both of these things at the same time kind of thing. Um, but if you ever get to the point where you can continuously have a cider on tap and you have good production at home, then maybe you can open. Yeah, you could. <laughs> so you could do both at the I, same time. I just installed a two tap system at home. So I'm hoping to consistently have at least five gal- five to 10 gallons on at a time. I'm, I'm hoping to have 10 gallons running all the time at home. Nice. Whenever I get to that point and I can just serve the, the few amount of people that I do in my community, yeah. then maybe I can open it up to a larger community. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, this is awesome stuff. What yeah. would your, what would your, brand be what would your name be oh i'm not gonna go into that (laughs) (laughs) you'll just have to keep keep following miss underscore cider yes follow instagram to be able to see my journey on the way and that's what it is it's just like a big journey um and i think that it's it's kind of like a more funzy kind of industry to be in because it's just like so sensory um circling and yeah. and so it's like it's it's a little different than doing drug development or doing like a more serious project um like I was describing before um so I yeah I just I've been drawn to just making more good um quality gluten-free products for people that can't have this inclusive fun experience that I used to be able to participate in whenever for I sure. I was able to drink beer um, it's just like that, having that community of people around you, like being able to participate in that, it's just the watering hole, you know, like, yeah. like you just meet so many different people being able to go out and do stuff. And, and this is just one thing that can get in the way of people being able to have the type of experiences that a normal, a normal functioning person can have. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So we pushed in like an hour. Oh, wow. I think it's a good time to start wrapping it up. Sure. I've been keeping these shorter lately, like an hour. Cause People are saying Attention two span. hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's sad because I I could sit here and talk for all day. But I know. Keeping it at an hour for now, I think, is good. So yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And for thank you so me. much for the cider. I'm so happy I got to share with you. Definitely, this stuff is good, and we'll do it again. Yeah, just, I can't wait. Yeah, keep doing it again for sure. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.